Hiya, I'm Anna Lundy. I'm CTL for Art and Photography at Ralph Allen School. I'm going to run through the PowerPoint with you now that I would normally show you during our open evening, but due to COVID restrictions, we're all online. Um, hopefully it'll outline the course for you and you can see a few um, examples of the kinds of work that our students produce. Um, we don't have a house style, we have a huge variety of different things that our students work with, a variety of different medias and a variety of different scales. Thank you. I'll just share my screen. So welcome to our uh, sixth form virtual open evening. Um, I'm just going to run through the PowerPoint and then show you some lovely examples uh, afterwards of our students work. Um, we have a two year A level course. The uh, AS was um, disbanded quite a few years ago now, um, which does leave us with um, a better introduction, I believe, to our course and a bigger freedom for our students to experiment. Um, we start off with a range of mini projects. Um, we do 2D and 3D media um, in a variety of different scales. Um, we encourage our students to develop and refine their ideas. So from the initial artist research all the way through the experimentational stages um, into developments um, and sort of testing out different things before they arrive at their final outcome. There's a lot of art history research that's needed for it and formal analysis. Um, to get them prepped, ready for the um, assignment section uh, in year 13. Uh, th that actually starts at Easter in year 12. Um, our students have eight lessons every two weeks. We have a fortnightly timetable here. Currently, half of that is with me and half with my colleague, um, Matthew Withy. Um, when they come to year 13, the A-level uh, lessons are nine every two weeks, and I see them for five of those lessons, and my colleague, uh, Chris Gordon, who is the deputy, of the department uh, season for the other four. We follow the AQA exam board course and normally that is 60% coursework and 40% exam. Um, we have an open door policy where um, if, this, if the room is free our sixth formers can come and work and use all of the art equipment and it's quite difficult to be uh, sort of taking things to the library to kind of paint in so um, yeah all of our rooms are open for students use and we have after school clubs as well. Um, we encourage our students to work in sketchbooks. Uh, they document the research process um, throughout the sketchbook and test different ideas out, experimenting with that wide range of media before they come to their final outcome. Um, we have end of term shows where all of the students can uh, display all of their hard work and we encourage parents and people from the local community to come and look at that. Um, as I said earlier on, uh, since 2016, it's been a two year A level course. Um, so the course, the actual marked component of the A level doesn't start until Easter term of year 12. Uh, but until that point, we um, try and explore a wide range of different techniques and build confidence in a range of different areas within our students. This work can be chosen then uh, as part of this A level submission if it is suitable, but it does mean that we get um, that freedom to experiment and there's no pressure in, oh, is it going to go right? Oh, is it not working? Um, there is a massive emphasis on skills and that independent learning here so that when they do start their A-level coursework, everybody is up and running to the same speed. So we have a series of workshops in year 12, as I've talked about before, and then the year 13 is one unit, which is a personal study and then the exam. So the personal study is entirely of the students choosing. Obviously, we guide them through that, um, but they can choose whatever topic they want that they've got an interest in. And that runs from April to January um, from year 12 into year 13. And then the exam is issued in February and that runs until May. That is a set um, exam from the exam board, but it is a choice of seven different starting points and they are widely um, ranging as there should be something for everybody there. And again, we'll work through sketchbooks and um, talk to our students individually so that they've got a way of moving forward with their chosen topic. These are our results. So I've got historical results um, kind of working through um, over 
well, since I've been in charge, basically, there's lots of different um, lovely, lovely um, bits of data on there um, if data is your thing. But basically, we have 100% pass rate, and you can see that mostly it's up in the 90s, our A star to C grade. Um, we are fortunate that most of our students choose to go on to higher education for an arts based course later on. Um, mostly go to Trowbridge or Bath. We do have people going to Bristol or to specific universities that offer the foundation course ready for that chosen degree that they're going on to. We have a large uptake, so um, we have a large class in each year group um, with that as their first choice rather than their third A level, which is a really lovely thing to see. Um, and again, there's the data for those of you that enjoy data. Um, this past year, um, I'm just thinking now, yeah, a good 90%, I would say, um, between the art and photography classes went on to Trowbridge or to Bath um, to do a foundation course. Um, we've had a, a fabulous refurb. We were very lucky uh, in 2010 to have the whole department gutted and refurbed. Um, we've got a brand new ICT suite as of 2018 um, with all the latest Photoshop and fabulousness on there. Um, we can use that for photography and art. We have um, daylight lights in our room, so there's no yellow tint anytime anybody's painting. Um, we've just um, this month got um, ten, 10 brand new DSLR cameras uh, for use within our department as well. This is uh, kind of the bit of the night where I would normally go, and this is why we're here. So these are the perks. Um, we've done them pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID we can resume this. Um, but we do encourage uh, people to see art uh, face to face, as it were. And um, the best I think we can go for at the moment is virtual gallery tours. Uh, the, the Met um, has an amazing virtual gallery tour to have a look at. But when we can have the chance to do it, we will go back out and see these fabulous works face to face. Now I'd like to just run through a few um, examples of some of our students' work to try and show you the range. Um, obviously, a lot of the stuff gets taken home. Uh, so we've had some fabulous um, 3D pieces, some um, textiles pieces that have all gone, but these are the ones I've managed to snap. Uh, so this is quite a large scale um, figure in the landscape piece. This one's quite tiny, actually. It's all done in biro uh, of the sea. Really amazing attention to detail. This one is a pencil drawing. Again, this one's actually quite tiny as well, just to, to show you that attention to detail. This one's quite big. So this was a, a mixed media piece where the student built layers upon layers of different media. So starting with acrylic and then there's some lino prints, there's some collage, um, there's some free drawing with paint over the top of it. And text. This is oil painting. This is quite a big one as well. Really lovely sense of light here. It's a nice composition here, a bit of reflection on the hand, quite tricky to draw hands. Um, lovely use of colour. Again, really nice use of colour, landscape piece. Um, this is oil on board. This is quite a large piece from uh, Seascape. Uh, the, the paint here is very thick. The student used a palette knife towards the front to get the texture on the rocks, um, but did lots of brush blending in the background to achieve that. Um, this is a more abstract piece, which was built upon layer upon layer upon layer with acrylic, scratched into and then sanded off and layered over again. This is acrylic, um, so real high attention to detail. That's quite a large scale piece as well. This is the inside of a glass full of beads. These are big scale pieces. Um, students seem to like to squash themselves onto the photocopier. So this is uh, um, the, the one on the left is a photograph taken at an extreme angle and, and then painted from. And then the other one is squashed onto the, the photocopier and then painted from that. No children were harmed in the making of this. We also encourage 3D work as well. Um, this student was really keen on casting and moulding and making lots of abstract little figures um, out of wires and um, some amazing uh, figurative work. This piece was about five foot tall and consists of 24 layers of different coloured papers all cut out and then sandwiched between the frame and the glass. 
um, to represent uh, some work that was produced as a result of one of our trips to New York. Quite classic imagery there. One of those ones that you didn't want to open a door when they were cutting it out because everything blew away, um, but really lovely end result. Uh, as I've said, we've had 3D outcomes in both sculpture and costume. Um, and lots of lovely textile pieces. We've had 3D installations as well, but we just don't have the space to keep it all. Um, I hope um, that that has shown you a nice range of the sorts of things that we do. Normally, you'd be able to look through our sketchbooks um, that we have as well. If any of the students um, currently attend, then I've left some sketchbooks um, out in our art corridor that they're welcome to look through um, to see the sorts of um, uh, supporting studies that go um, to making these final outcomes. So what we're looking for, so hopefully that's answered what you're looking for, but we're looking for those dedicated students. We really want students with a passion for the subject. They are willing to put the time in. We all know it's a very time consuming course, but it, the hard work pays off. We want students to, to work creatively, independently. We want them to follow their own pathway in terms of what they're interested in and the media that they would like to use. We want them to have an open mind to trying out new things, stepping out of that comfort zone, working on bigger scales, finding your inspiration wherever you are. That's what I'm looking for. So hopefully that's been useful for you. Um, thank you for listening and hope it wasn't too ooh, to, <laughs> to listen to my recording. But um, thank you very much.